One of the interesting things I found about hurry up drivers, and I can categorically say this with clients that are in their hurry up, is they're always late. They get <laughs> up early for everything. <laughs> they give themselves plenty of time, but there's always something else that needs doing just as they're coming out the door or they aim to come yeah, to therapy, but they need to stop off shopping on the way and they get held up with something. So they're always either on the last minute or actually a few minutes late and come in yeah. bursting yeah. through the door. We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show. Behind Closed Doors podcast with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Back to episode 64 and we're going to carry on from the last four podcasts Gosh. all about driver behaviours and in this one myself and the wonderful Bob Cook we're going to be looking at the hurry up and please others or please me whichever term you like to use. Well let's start with hurry up because off air you were saying oh well, let's get on with this next podcast and <laughs> sex and i made that very sort of i don't know cute observation about hurrying up but perhaps you want to say a little bit as you used to do about driver behavior if the you know people haven't heard the last you know the last few podcasts on drivers well if you haven't heard the last few podcasts i would recommend going back and listening to the <laughs> last four yeah and hurry up and yeah, yeah that's it yeah we'll hang around for half an hour while you run through them at double speed <laughs> Um, but it is important if you want an overview to go back and listen to the previous yeah. ones because yeah. we've kind of covered them all individually but our driver behaviors are a defense mechanism that we get when we're very young um, we get them through recognition and validation unspoken recognition and validation from our parents so it, it's it's through gestures and things like that we, we're not told this directly from our parents um, and also entwined in all of that are the injunctions, um, all the don't messages that we get. And we use our driver behaviours all the time in everyday life. And as we've said in previous podcasts, it's usually these sort of things that bring people into therapy in the first place around communication. Mm. That's right. OK, hurry up. So if somebody is exhibiting hurry up driver behaviour, they will be uh, feeling the pressure of life. They'll be uh, filling their days with lots of appointments. They'll be uh, getting up early in the morning to make sure they can get the appointments on time or even earlier, get their half past eight instead of nine o'clock. Or they will be people who uh, really uh, scurry around, even that's an old term, scurry around. But anyway, uh, because uh, they don't want to waste any time in the day they got lots of things to do and they are busy themselves with the many events and appointments that they put in their diaries. One of the interesting things I found about hurry up drivers, and I can categorically say this with clients that are in their hurry up, is they're always late. They get up early for everything. <laughs> they give themselves plenty of time, but there's always something else that needs doing just as they're coming out the door or they aim to come yeah, to therapy, but they need to stop off shopping on the way and they get held up with something. So they're always either on the last minute or actually a few minutes late and come in yeah. bursting yeah. through the door. That's right, because there's always something else to do. Yes, yeah, 100%. You know, and... Yeah, that's very true. Like the schizoid character will be you know, always on time to the dot or a bit earlier, uh, or the highly adapted police and driving person. But the hurry ups are always, yeah, often a few minutes late because yeah. they've had lots of, and in fact, they've often double booked themselves as well. Quite possibly, yes, yeah. <laughs> and I know we're smiling when we say this, but I think this is one of the ones that, is, is really clear to see somebody that's in the hurry up driver. Some of them are quite subtle, but, but I think this is one where you will know if you're in your hurry up driver behavior because it's, it's you know, a rabbit caught in headlights. It's that manic behavior where you're just going from one thing to the other. The diary is always full. You're not very good at just sitting and being with yourself or 
your thoughts you're just up and doing usually yeah. very slim people as well i hasten to add because of all the running around oh. <laughs> I mean, no, I, I, these sort of people, if, if, you know, in their sessions will talk very fast. Yes. Extraordinarily fast. And I'm always having to tell them to slow down, which they don't like. And then they start to just as fast as, as before. Yeah. And the people who um, uh, don't pause for breath, actually, and they just carry on and on. And I am often saying, it's okay for you to take a deep breath. The world won't collapse. Yeah. Um, you give them the permission to just slow down for a moment while we can talk about what's really important but they are people who uh i often think they're very agitated and they are agitated but i think it's more like what you've just said it's phonetic energy yeah constantly twiddling the legs or fidgeting or or something yeah and i, th I think it's really interesting what you said about you say to them it's okay to take some time and to just slow down. I've been in sessions where I found myself hurrying up. I'm yeah. kind of pacing myself to them before I realise, hang on a minute, what's going on? I need to slow it down rather than speeding up to them. Ah, that's right. So when you're taught as a counsellor or therapist to, it's very important to pace yourself with your client or you're very important to attune yourself. With these types of people, it's really important to actually change the pace yeah you know but even my heart <laughs> yeah. i notice my heart speeding up and it's like what's going on <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 and, and they do double book and it, it, i i did smile on earlier on they do tend to uh, arrive a bit late because they've used the double book of the gods squeezing the final gym session before they actually get to the session or something like that and there's no sense of being able to stop reflect on life um, they have to get to the top of the mountain double quick and back down again. And uh, if they've got any more time, they'll, they'll go off a bicycle ride or perhaps they'll go swimming or maybe, you know, they'll fit in the last uh, <laughs> the last run of the day. But they're always doing things, fitting in things, just like you said. And the problem about that, of course, is they don't really reflect on themselves, their life. They don't pay attention to their body they um they're always running away from themselves yeah yeah and I, I think it's it's important to mention i know i've said it in <clears throat> a few of the other podcasts is that we have access to all five of these driver behaviors it's not you know we might have a few that are our go-to ones but we can be strong at certain points of the day and try hard and please others and we, we can access all of these so it's not that we just have one and that's it for the rest of our life. No, you're right. And we will have favourite yeah. drivers because we've been programmed that way. Yeah. My mum used to say, it's awful to think about it, and I can't believe that she used to tell me. <laughs> she used to say, we always thought you were going to die very young. And okay. I was like, what do you mean? And she said, because you were always in such a rush. It was as if you knew that you weren't going to have enough time to finish everything. So I think even as a child, I used to talk in my sleep. It was like I never shut down. She yeah, said so you would modeled. And you, and goodness knows what decisions you made, but you were you were programmed, if you like. Yeah. To to be a certain way. Yeah. But she'd say you, you know, you'd sit up in bed straight away, you were wide awake and you just start talking and that was it. She said everything was like at hundred miles an hour when you were younger. Yeah, and and the problems are, and it may not be with you, of course is uh, again i was thinking of couples particularly and they come in and uh ask what they want and one of the partners says well actually i want him to slow down he's work you know he's doing this 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 and this and there's no time for the relationship yeah no time for intimacy no time to enjoy sex no time to enjoy pleasure because they always have to go on to the next thing yeah there's no real satisfaction satisfaction isn't completed because they go on to another cycle that's it yeah you don't revel in the glory of achieving anything you just straight on to the next thing yeah which yeah. uh which leads to very severe or can lead to very severe problems in relationships and, and specifically around satisfaction and intimacy yeah 
Yeah, hundred mm. percent. And it's interesting being somebody that does go into my hurry up driver. Sometimes it's really difficult to be with people who are slow. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's I I I want to pull them along with me sometimes you know it's, it's like if I go shopping with my mum or my sister they obviously they're older than me but it's just like it's a it's a trauma to go at a snail's pace sometimes it's very uncomfortable yeah yeah and you can of course feel very vulnerable from that process I just I I just don't know how to do it sometimes it's yeah, yeah. As a therapist, it's very, very important to give people permissions to slow down and say, you know, the world's not going to collapse if you take a big breath. And yeah. And is this how it is for you in life? Do you think that if you just slow down or reflect, something bad's going to happen? Yeah. I think I need to say in this as well, this is not how I behave in the therapy room. I'm talking about me personally. My yeah, yeah, I'm, sure. I'm completely different in the therapy room. Yeah. If you, were, if you were in the therapy with them and you were exhibiting your hurry up driver like you're just talking about in a very intense way, you'd be zooming through the session so quickly. You'd probably do three sessions in one. I, I would. You'd be exhausted. Yeah. And you wouldn't be able to see anyone at the no. next session. I, I do think I need to say that I'm not, I don't hurry anybody up when they're in, in the therapy yeah. room with me. No. no, but it is, it's, it's really interesting. And one of the things I used to do when I was training, I think it might've been you that said to do it was to people watch mm. and, and see if you can work out what driver behavior people are in. You know, if you're in a cafe, just, not listening into conversations, but just looking at the body language and how they're sat and, you know, the expressions that they're using and things and use that as a way of getting familiar with certain traits that we all have. Because it does come in useful in the therapy room. Yeah, and, and just as important to think about what are those defences covering up? Yeah. Because that's where you're heading in the end. Yeah, that, that's the aim. Yeah, you could turn down the tele you could watch these soaps, turn the but turn the volume down. <laughs> then you can look at these drivers' behaviours and yeah, think what they're covering up. That's an exercise I often used to give students. I think you probably gave it to us. Yeah, <laughs> good old sorts. So we touched on the hurry up. That I think that you know I'm I, I quite like the hurry up driver. Yeah, and one last... one other thing about the hurry up as you like it is. If you've got a therapist who unconsciously comes from a hurry up position, what do you think might be some of the problems for, 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 the, for the therapy? If, if the therapist did it from that position unconsciously, and from an, not like you done a lot of therapy and you, you understand that and work through all that stuff. But I was thinking about the therapist or the counselor doesn't have any therapy, by the way, which is another story. Um, uh, what do you think? therapy would look like if they were coming from that position themselves i'm not sure that it would be evident in the room but i think they would probably feel frustrated if it wasn't moving along yes that's a certain what I'm... pace <laughs> that's right the therapist would feel very frustrated yeah if something wasn't happening yeah if cure didn't happen quickly yeah or quick enough that they think it should happen yeah yeah, yeah totally. Absolutely. Yeah, i think it's really important this because i think therapists need to do their own therapy around these things because then otherwise they may unconsciously come from these places yeah yeah totally and we we do all dip in and dip out of it all the time it's just you know for me again and i know i say it virtually in every podcast it's all around awareness mm. being oh. aware that these things even exist you know, is, is the first step as a therapist or counsellor. Yeah, well, hopefully our podcasts are helping people here. Yeah. So on to the, the last one, which is please others. Please me stroke, please others. Yes. Well, I hope we're doing a good, good job pleasing people here. You I please say. me every week, Bob, <laughs> every week. <laughs> yeah. now, now, I always sm smile, you know, and I perhaps say to people in training, things like that, if, if clients come in with very intense, please me or please others, drivers, and you can get lots of cups of tea and 
biscuits and uh, presents. <laughs> yes, uh, so they, they aren't the most. They're pretty attractive clients in that sort of way. But the problem is, if they're always if you have intensity with this type of pleasing others drivers, then the problem is you can become you can act and feel like a doormat. Yeah, because you're always. Hopefully, the, the thinking anyway from a young age is if I please other people all the time, uh, then I'll get recognition for doing that. And the problem in problem is in real life when the, they start realizing that isn't the case. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. They're doing all this good stuff, and you know, I don't know whether it's expecting or wanting the validation, but when it's not forthcoming, they get pretty peed off with those people around them. Oh, for not yeah. noticing the effort and time and everything yeah yeah goes on so if you're in a very intense police driver um for whatever reasons then you're not really honoring yourself um and the therapy is very clear it's get helping you get to a place where you can have some self-agency to uh, be responsible for your own self-definition to start reflect on yourself and all these things how again, if you've been programmed a certain way, then that feels very uncomfortable to do that. Yeah, yeah. I think there's, again, you know, I think there's drawbacks to all of this, but I think with the, the please others, there's, there's an awful lot of guilt when we start to prioritize ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that to me is the thing that you're often working with, with please others, is trying to, you know, if, if you're talking about, self-love and self-compassion it's really difficult for them to focus on themselves rather than the other in a relationship yeah because i think they're being self-indulgent yeah selfish all... it's that's not what we do yeah yeah so you get all these sort of you know <sighs> these words that come from childhood really yeah they're really parent words actually put onto the child yeah um and they certainly do come with guilt and shame if they're not actually compulsively caring for people or if they're actually you know spending time reflecting on themselves and quite often coming to therapy of course brings yeah. up this um, negative self-critic that maybe they're self-indulgent and they're gazing at their own navel or they're spending the times reflect on themselves when really they could be out saving the world or or whatever yeah. it's a waste of money why are you doing that <laughs> all these things that go with that yeah that process so in your book beside you what's it say in terms of the behaviors that would be exhibited uh that people would see that might indicate the person is in the police others driver um, it says that the tone of voice is usually high or squeaky, oh. typically raising at the end, like you're asking a question. Um, gestures reaching out with the hands, usually palms up and head nodding. I do a lot of head nodding. I do Lots do of head nodding, yeah. Um, posture, shoulders hunched up and forward, leaning forwards to the other person. Yeah. So yeah. whereas the B-strong might be sitting back with their arms folded, the please others would be more moving forward um and facial expressions i must have wrote this at some point during my training because it's about the heads usually lowered and their eyes are up and straight away i must have thought about lady die <laughs> you know lady die lady used to die, look yeah, down yeah. and then look up that sort yeah. of i don't know that the other person is higher yeah. than us somehow yeah. yeah yeah i thought that was really interesting yes it's oh, an interesting driver because, um, you know, that level of deferring, that level of um, moving away from the self can be very problematic, again, in relationships. Yeah. Be and, and eventually what happens is they will resent, you know, um, they put in all this effort, this extra work, pleasing and all these things hoping for recognition like they got from their mother and father when they did it or significant people and if they're not getting that type of recognition or approval in the same way they then start to persecute or resent 
process and that's when communication starts to break down yeah and again you know i think it's really interesting how sometimes it shows up in the therapy room as well with uh, somebody that's please others or please me mm. 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 you know they don't want to take up time in the therapy room they you know they will keep trying to switch the focus onto something else or asking how you are and well that's the big you into that yeah, yeah. So you've met, you, you mentioned the two biggest dynamics. One where they uh, will wait to talk about themselves to the 59th minute. Yeah. Um, and the second one, of course, where they'll continually ask you, they'll come in and you, you'll say something like, well, you know, what's it been like in the last week for you? Oh, well, you know, let's not talk about me. Let's, how have you been, by the way? How yeah. have you been? I noticed last week you had a... You had a bit of a sniffle. Have you actually recovered? And what's been happening for you? Yeah. You know, now, you know, that scenario, you know, I, would, I could smile about it, but it's tragically, tragically sad. Yes, yeah. Because, because it, they will have been taught that program that got recognition of that type of behaviour as a child. So they've decided X and then they decide you know, but if they don't get back the recognition, the approval, or, or whatever they're looking for, they feel very deflated. Yeah. Yeah. And will bring tremendous, tremendous problems in relationship with that dynamic. Yeah. And and if they're with a sort of person who's, um, yeah, for whatever reasons, finds intimacy or or certain difficulties in the relationship. They were. They could easily treat them like a doormat. Yeah, and it's when the worm turns, so to speak. You know, when when I think about please others, I always think about the drama triangle that they're a rescuer, but yeah. then at some point they turn into the victim and then the persecutor and get really peed off when they're not getting their needs met. But they don't want people to meet their needs, so it's like a catch twenty two situation. <laughs> Yeah, You're a bit of a martyr a lot of the time. That's right, and tragically, it's all set up in childhood. Yes, because in childhood, but of course, it worked properly. They got some of their needs met, and of course, tragically, if they still try to, you know, go along with those outdated behaviours, then when they move from the family of origin, uh, problems may arise. Yeah, and then we will see them in therapy. Yeah. self-referring pleasing others dynamic uh, which a therapist really needs to hear that story understand it and looking look for what's missing underneath it which is why i keep coming back to with these drivers the therapist that gets this the therapist folly is if they don't if they concentrate too much on the defenses and behaviors without looking at what has been defended or covered up underneath. Yeah. yeah. And again, I just think it's a brilliant tool to use in the therapy room. You know, I, this is one of the reasons why I love transactional analysis. It's just another, it's just another wonderful method of working these things out, connected to the script and the injunctions and everything else. Mm, mm. So I agree with you. Um, and I, I've enjoyed the opportunity in the last however many podcasts to talk about these defences and driver behaviours and hopefully get the message over that, first of all, it was a wonderfully bright adaptation, if you like, to work out what the parents would give them recognition for and adapt that behaviour, uh, even though it might give them problems in life today, and that's why they're in the therapy room. But the other thing is to encourage the therapist to look at what's beneath the defence processes as the most important place to explore in the service of health. Yeah. Very gently explore. Yeah, it doesn't mean you get rid of the defence mechanisms. It means understanding what the defence mechanisms are about, which will enable the therapist to go to help the person discover the um, person that's been 
there all the time underneath the defence process. Yeah. And I know I've mentioned it in a previous one of these ones. I think it was in the first one. But if you want to know a little bit more, I do have a quiz on my website, which is oh, yeah. jackiejones.co.uk. And if you just yeah. check out under free resources, there's a little quiz that you can answer and little videos that go along with them that people might find useful. Um, because I'm a people pleaser and I like to please people. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to please Jackie by doing it. You can do it from your adult out of curiosity. Uh, but it is... Uh, these quizzes are interesting. Uh, um, yeah, they're I, a lot of fun, I think. I I quite enjoyed doing a quiz when I was trying to work out which one I am. So yeah. until next time, Bob, I've not got a topic for the next one, so it'll be. So, a so once again, people can just enjoy the curiosity, the spontaneity of listening to us next week to see what we're going to be talking about. Hundred percent, it's going to be a surprise for all of us. <laughs> for all of us. Okay, dokie. Until next Thank time, you. Bob. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode.